and I am not going to use a fragrance oil because I want to test one variable at a time. So whenever you are testing anything and it's brand new, you want to test one variable at a time. And the variable that I am testing now is the wick, um, the wick sizes. So I'm using City N3 and City N4. Um, Hola mi gente bella y bienvenidos a mi canal. My name is Sandra. If this is your first time here, and welcome to my channel. In this channel, you'll be learning and I'll be speaking about everything high-end or luxury candle making business tips. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. So as you can tell by the title of this video, we'll be making uh, candles and I'm not going to be discussing too much. We'll be chit chatting instead. So I have everything in front of me. This is my coconut soy, uh, coconut blend wax. I have my pitcher. I brought the, I brought a little pitcher just in case if I want to use this one. Um, but I don't think I'll be using it, but I am going to use my big pitcher and I have my double broiler method going on over here. Um, I do have my pouring pitcher for my actual wax. I'm going to be testing these four uh, candle jars and these are 20 ounce candle uh, jars actually. The jars is 20 ounces but it holds 16 ounces of wax. So I'll be using this and these are uh, the three wick uh, uh, vessels that I purchased from I can't remember the name of the company if I remember I'll link it down below and uh, this one is the CDN wicks that I finally got from 1617 actually I got it a few weeks ago but I wanted to come up with the video and uh, all the setup so it took me a little bit but I finally came up with it and I'll be testing two different wicks. It'll be the City N4 and I'll be testing the City N3 as well. I have my uh, thermometer ready. Oh, I just opened it. Up. I have my thermometer ready. I do also have my mixing, my gold mixing spoon ready as well. I have my wick stickers ready here. My gloves as I normally wear them and I also have my alcohol so I can wipe my containers my vessels down and I have my napkins here if I need it and I have my actual um, uh, scale right over here and I found that I put this clear plastic uh, paper on top of it to actually protect my scale which makes a very good idea I should have thought about that a long time ago because now my scale is already beat up but um, I'm going to implement this for my other scale once I use when I use my other one because I do have another one uh, that I use for shipping and um, I do have uh, a marker and a pen and that's to label which which jars I put the actual city in wigs for so I won't get confused. And because I am testing my wicks, this in the new vessel, I am only using the um, the wicks and the actual uh, paraffin uh, coconut wax because I am only testing the actual vessels. I am not going to add any colors. I don't usually add colors to my candles anyways and I am not going to use a fragrance oil because I want to test one variable at a time. So whenever you are testing anything and it's brand new, you want to test one variable at a time. And the variable that I am testing now is the wick um, the wick sizes. So I'm using City N3 and City N4. Um, and um, I purchased this wick, which is very cool uh, tool to have. These are from, uh, what is this called? The Design House. And you could get this wick holder, which holds the wick in place. 
in each of your vessels. They do have them in different sizes. I know for a fact that they do have um, sizes from candle science vessels. They have it from uh, 16, 17 and dream vessels. And they do have other vessels as well. But if you are using um, vessels that they already have, you could go ahead and go into designhousechic.com and they will have, um, they will have these wick holders for your vessels. And the cool thing about it is that it has, it comes with two, it comes with two centering, uh, wick thingamajogs or thingamajigs and then you just put it in here but because my vessel is a lot bigger than this what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set my wick uh, centering tool on top of my on underneath my vessel so that all I have to do is just center the actual wicks in the center of each of those holes so I could have a precise um, wick center well my my wig will be centered precisely inside of my container as opposed to just trying to figure out where exactly is it going to go and I will be doing that for all four and also um, I did use these in my other vessels and it is a pretty cool um, it is a pretty cool uh, tool. The only the only drawback to this is that it only sits on top of your vessel, and it doesn't like it doesn't it doesn't hold it in place. Like say for example, if it fit just like a lid, like if it had a lid apparatus, so if it had like a holding here and here, so it could just sit on top of the actual container as if it was a lid that will work even better but this is what I have and this is what we're going to be using and I believe this is a very very good tool to have um, it is approximately like I want to say 30 to 35 dollars for this it comes in a pack of 10 and then it brings two it brings two of these centering tools um, wick centering tool so um, I think this is a very good investment if you are going to uh, if you have money set aside for it if you you don't necessarily need it but it is a very good investment in order for you to have your wicks to be centered perfectly every single time and again uh, 1617 actually sells these as well they partner up with um, design house um, to have these specifically for their vessels. I know that Dream Vessels also has some of it, but in um, Design House, I'm not sure if they actually sell it themselves in their website. I'm not a, I'm not sure, but I know for a fact that Candle Signs does not sell these, that you'll have to get it from um, Design House, and they actually um, have a lot of vessels that do have these for you. If you have the actual uh, vessels that they have, then you could go ahead and just purchase those from them. Now, I'm going to be measuring out. I want to fill this up to, um, let's do, let's do, I think this holds four pounds of wax. So, I'm going to be using let's do three pounds of wax because I don't want it to be too full and then from there we'll go over to the um, double broiler method I'm not going to be using the my um, so light um, pot because I don't want to have the uh, I don't want to mess around with having it on a lower level and then having the wax at a higher level so that I could pour it out correctly and it's gonna kind of be messy and I don't want to do too much mess in my office and the reason why I'm not filming this in my actual uh, candle shop 
area is because it is kind of dark in there and I don't have the correct lighting and this light works best for this um, for filming so that's why I'm in my office and not in the actual shop. So as soon as I get all my lighting situation getting on uh, better over there, then we'll move the filming over to my shop once I have all of that good to go. But for now, I just turned on my um, my water so that it could be warm by the time I add my uh, picture to it. And then what we'll be doing now, I'm going to be putting on my gloves and I'm going to be adding the coconut wax to the pitcher and we'll be measuring out our wax so that we'll have exactly or close enough to three pounds. I might go over a little bit because I don't think um, three pounds fills up four jars. I believe three pounds might do three or maybe two and a half, but we'll see. Alright, so I have my wax going. We're going to now work on the actual vessels. So I'm going to take off these gloves so I won't dirty my vessels while I clean them up. And that's the beauty part about having gloves. You don't have to worry about them. They are this, this, um, discarded as, as soon as you're done um, actually doing your uh, candle waxes. So what we're going to be doing now, I'm going to put this to the side, is we're going to be cleaning each of these vessels with alcohol. And I just turned off my scale. I believe I already cleaned these because it looks very clean, but we want our wicks to adhere correctly and stick to the actual container. So we're going to make sure that we actually have these completely clean. And also we want our sticker labels to actually go on this. So that's why we clean the inside and we actually clean the outside. And again, these are 20 ounce containers but they only hold 16 ounces of wax so if i was to label these to sell i would label it with the correct ounces 16 ounces and how much grams as well i don't know the top of my head how many grams is 16 ounces so that's why i didn't say how many it was i should have said I should have had researched that before. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do that. So, okay, so now our jars is completely clean. Let me close this off. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be adding our wicks. So I'm gonna put the wick stabilizer at the bottom of my jar and then I'm going to get the three CDNs first. And 
we're gonna need three of those because this is a three wick container. And we're gonna start off with the first one that is closest to you guys. And it is very hot in here, by the way, so I am sweating. going to put these right in the center Okay, and I have to make sure that these are exactly in there, so I have to press it down with my pen because I can't really reach down there with my pen with my finger. So I'm gonna do that with my pen, and it should be secure in place. It is, and now we're gonna do the same thing with this one. But before we do that, let's label that so I won't forget which one is which. So this one will label that as CDN3. Okay, so we already did one city in three, and I already did uh, the city in four. We're gonna do another city in four. Um, I'm, what I'm doing now is adding the wig stickers to the bottom of the wig tab. My camera just turned off. So we're gonna have three, and my wax is burning. Well, melting, not burning. So we already have all. I'm gonna take out the sticky papers on the back of each one. So I was on Instagram the other day, I believe it was yesterday. <laughs> the other day, yesterday. Um, and I was scrolling to through my feed and I saw this this uh, candle maker, no, she was a soap maker, and I felt so bad for her because she had a TikTok video and she put it on Instagram, and it had a whole bunch of, of her uh, soaps, and she was not speaking on the actual video, but she had like words scrolling around on the actual pictures, of her videos actually of her soaps and I felt so bad for her because her video was about her only having six sales I believe it was six sales and she felt that she had to close her shop because she didn't have any sales and she only had six for the entire month of January and um, she was very discouraged and she had over like thousands of views on that video and that was just on Instagram and then she had so much um, motivational words on that video and I wanted to and I pointed that out because I know that a lot of us are in this craft of making and making videos and making our crafts and whenever we do have that instance in which we are not selling, this will be the perfect opportunity for you to invest your time and do it the back end work, such as 
um, working on marketing, working on ads, telling people about your business, um, creating bundles like my last uh, video was, uh, 10 ideas for you to, um, without spending any money, to put into your business so that you could increase your sales. So a lot of it is strategizing your actual business. So if your website needs some type of adjusting, move pictures around, even if your Etsy website needs some type of moving of pictures around, you could do that too. You could create a sale. This will be the perfect opportunity for you to work on the back end of your business so that you won't just sit around and not do anything in regards to it. All you're doing is just, I'm not saying that she was complaining, but um, not to just dwell on the fact that you're not selling. What is it that you're doing to actually add to your business, add value to your business, and to your time too, because if you're just sitting around not doing anything in regards to it, all you're doing is just going on Instagram or going on TikTok or any other social media saying that you're not selling anything, it's not actually working towards actually selling anything. Maybe she did get some sales in, um, from that video, I don't know. But it is a good idea for you to work on your actual, uh, the back end of your business when sales are slow. And you can start strategizing for the holidays that are coming up, such as Valentine's that is coming around the corner, also uh, Mother's Day that is also coming around. So you'll have time because I know soap making does take time. It takes weeks for it to cure. So this will be the perfect time to, for you to make more and to actually do the back end of your business. And the same thing with candle making. And this is the time when you do have slow months so you can start strategizing on other stuff with the, with the back end of your business so you will know exactly what else to do when you are in those slow months. You could actually start, um, start your uh, email list. This will be the perfect time so you could start um, drafting emails to send out to your um, subscribers of your website if you do have already an email list built up at that time so that you could create more uh, hype for your products and so that you could let your customers know that you are still um, you know they're still in the back of your mind and they are still you are still working towards your business and not to forget about your business when they do want to buy candles so don't this get discouraged on those slow months just think as those slow months as your time to start up with your business and to start doing something else in the back end for your business. So those are my tips for you. Let's see how hot is my candle wax. And there's still a chunk of candle in here. So it is at 163. I am going to melt my candles up until 190 degrees. Um, if I was going to add my um, fragrances, I will melt it just a little bit higher, 195, and then I'll add my fragrance at 190, and then I'll take it out, actually I'll take it out of the, um, of here first, and then add my fragrance at 190, and then pour just about at 180, and heat my candle jars, just so that I will have perfect glass adhesion, but I'm not worrying about glass adhesion at this time because I'm not going to sell these. I'm just making these for testing purposes, so that's why I'm not worried about the glass adhesion. But if I was making this for resale, I would get my heat gun and I will definitely definitely warm my candle vessels up so that the temperature of the wax and the temperature of the actual vessels are kind of around the same temperature so that when I do pour it in there, there isn't any um, discrepancy in between the temperatures of the glass jar because the glass jar right now is kind of uh, cool, it's not warm. So now we don't need this anymore, we're going to close off our median packs up because we're not using that
And then what we are going to use now is the holder. So the holders, I'm going to put them on top of here and then I'll fix them in a minute. Okay, and all I'm doing, and I'll get my camera off of this so you guys can see. Okay, so all I'm doing is arranging the wick centering tool so that it could sit right in here, but because I need both hands to do this, I'm just gonna lightly put it in here. And you could tell there's like little grooves that fit exactly inside of each of these pin-like, yeah, they look like clothes pin, pin-like um, little grooves. So this is what the centering tool should look like. So I finished one here and I wanted you guys to see how this one does. And then that's it. And all you have to do is just add your wax inside and just let it do its job. And I'm going to do the same thing for these three. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for these three right over here. But I'm going to do that off camera because I need both my hands in order for me to do that. And then I'll show you guys how it looks like close up. Okay, so here is the finished look with all the CN3 and 4 and the wick holders. It's perfect sitting in there and you will get a perfect wick center every single time. So this is a very good tool if you are in the works of actually spending an extra cash because these, these are not cheap and you don't really need these but if you are if you do have extra money then you could get one of these and these i purchased it from uh, designhousechic.com and it works very very well and i think this is a very good step up from the other wick centering tools that I had, which was the cotter pin and the chopsticks and also the wick bow ties. I hope you guys can see this. And I am now at 180 degrees in my wax and that is the perfect temperature to start pouring them in here again i am not adding any color because or any fragrances because i am testing only the wicks in each of my vessels so because i am not testing um because i i don't really know which wick would work best for this container i am not going to be testing fragrances i don't want to um waste materials so fragrances are very expensive by the way and i blend my fragrances so therefore i am not going to be using any fragrances just to test and i'm only testing the actual cd and wicks so i'm going to fill in the three and then a four and then another three and then another four depending on how much wax i have left and if i don't have enough to fill the others the others but my primary one is three and four so that I have a basis and I'm doing extras just in case um, that I want to test out um, more 
in a different area because I don't test them out in the same exact area so that the, the heat from one won't affect the other. So it's always good to at least test out two of your wicks at the, at the same time so that you'll have more of a good basis on which works um, and how it works. So um, again, let's first do the CDN3 and this is So let's turn this off because I am not going to be melting any more wax. Whatever I have here is what we're going to be using. And let me get this out of the way and let me add my wax to this one. And again, this is so much easier to just pour from here because of the spout as opposed to trying to do it from there. I mean, it does have a little dip, but the pitcher is too big and you'll make a bigger mess. And I don't wanna make a mess. And also because I forgot to put the brown paper that I usually put on my table when, when I make candles. So yeah, we're not gonna be pouring it out directly from the pitcher. And if you want to make sure that all your candles have the exact same amount in each one, you could put it on your scale and then weigh out each of your candles um, as you pour out your wax into each container so that each of your candles have the exact same amount every single time that you make it. Um, again, because I am just testing, I'm not doing that. But it's a very good practice to do every single time. And you see how easy it is just to pour out your wax from the pouring couch, uh, pouring pitcher because of the spout, it's just great. And it looks like I have enough for one and a half more. So yeah, I was right. Um, three, I put three, three point five. Yeah, three point five pounds. Three pounds and five ounces of wax into my pitcher, and now it looks like three point three pounds and five ounces makes three. So yeah, so then it makes exactly three because if I were to add more, this doesn't have enough to make a complete. Four, so I'm not even. I'm not even going to do any of that. Yeah, it's not enough to make the last one. But I believe if I would have used four pounds, four pounds would have made exactly each of these. So because I only used 3.5, it only made three, and I have um, this says I have a number. This has one cup, so it has eight ounces. So it has exactly eight ounces of wax in here. And um, I don't want to add it to this one because it's not enough. So I rather leave this aside. And when I do have more wax, I'll just melt more wax and then I'll just add it to there and then add that to that one too. So that will be on the same page. And this one only has eight, eight, eight ounces left. So I'm not gonna add it to this one. So we could put this to the side. And I didn't use my mixing spoon because I did not add any fragrance or any color to it. So actually, I didn't even need it. So, and that is it, you guys. Um, this video is coming to an end. If you are still 
um, in the market for upgrading your actual um, centering tools and this is a very good uh, option for you to do because it holds and it gives you the actual uh, measuring for each of your vessels and your wigs so you won't have to try to figure out how to place your wigs they also have one with two and they also have one with just one in the center so they have double wicking single wig and triple wigs available at um, designhousechic.com and it comes with the actual uh, centering holder so that each wick stays in place as it melts as your candle um, not melts as your candle goes back to a solid semi-solid state so um, this is it for this video I'm going to actually burn this off camera and what another tip that I realized with coconut wax is that coconut um, the longer you have it cured if you're using fragrances the better it performs after the fact so when you're burning it let's say for example you did it today and then you are going to be testing your fragrance if you wait at least uh, a week or more you could, a week is fine but if you wait a week or more the fragrance in the actual coconut like it blends in so much better with the coconut wax um, and burning it seven days after works a lot better now for uh, paraffin IGI 6006 you don't necessarily have to wait that long you could just go ahead and uh, burn it 24 hours after it solidifies or 48 hours after it solidifies and then it it, it works fine just as if you would have waited 7 20 whatever days after but for coconut in my opinion I've noticed that it works a lot better if you wait and let it cure for at least a week and then you burn test it for the fragrance but if you're just working on trying to see which wick works best for your jars you don't have to worry wait that long but it's a good thing that I do have two of each of these uh, sizes because I can test it out as soon as it solidifies now and then wait the two to two to four or five days that I want to test out the other to see how well it performs after you waited at least a week so I'm going to actually get more wax and melt the other one so I could actually have two of the CDN3s and two of the CDN4s so I could go ahead and test that hypothesis out so again testing one variable at a time and as soon as you are going to start actually burning burning your candles make sure that you have a i don't have one here because i wasn't going to test that not right now a uh, notebook ready to test out your actual findings of each candle did it soot did the candle um wick uh burn too slowly or it had too much uh, flame the flames were not enough or did your placing of the actual wicks were too close to the edge causing it to not burn correctly did it tunnel did it mushroom did you put your wicks too close together so it's not reaching a full melt pool all that information should be jotted down so that you will know which wick performs the best every single time so that whenever you do do your um your resale batches you won't be confused you will have your data already ready for you so thank you for watching thank you for subscribing if you have not subscribed yet go ahead and subscribe comment down below I will be updating this video um, as soon as these going to uh, solidify so that you can see how it performed and then I'll have notes down as well so that I'll give you my feedback on each of the the, the candles when it melts and don't forget to hit the notification bell and like the video it also helps me in the youtube algorithm and it helps other candle makers find my video so 
Until the next one, guys. Bye, mi gente bella.